Hello, I'd like to thank to the uh, meeting organizers and Phyllis for this kind invitation and the opportunity to share with all of you these new visualization tools to perform structural heart interventions. I organized my lecture to cover in two points, the photorealistic 3D rendering and the fusion imaging. So attending to the first point, I'd like to uh, talk about these two uh, 3D photorealistic renderings, the true view and the glass view. Both of them uh, has a more close uh, representation of the anatomy to the, uh, to the anatomical pieces, but uh, more interesting has the ability to move the spotlight uh, in any position of the 3D volume to improve and enhance the 3D perception of the for the uh, for the reader, but even if it's possible to place the light behind of the tissue and study the uh, any structure with um, transillumination capabilities. For example, on this uh, aortic valve, we are seeing on a face view the light is in front of the aortic valve, and we are seeing the the opening and the leaflets. But here, the light is behind of the aortic valve. So we are studying the leaflet's propriety uh, by uh, transillumination and the opening is pretty clear by the light crossing through the uh, aortic valve orifice. If we have the glass view, this uh, transparency option that erase all this information and keep just the edge of the borders of the image and enhance the uh, edge reference of uh, the structures and has the capability to have an external view of a of an structure that uh, we are going to see in the next slide. On the mitral valve example, we could compare the classic renders without and with color, the true view and the glass view. And it has been published uh, uh, that uh, with the employee of these new renders, it's easier for the readers to identify the defect uh, on the anatomy of the mitral valve and to identify the location and the number and severity of the jets of the uh, mitral regurgitation, especially with the glass view. But if we uh, place the light in other position and we could study the mitral valve with transillumination and it's clear how is the commissure and the coaptation light, the coaptation line, and especially for example when we have a uh, some problems on the uh, quality of the leaflets on the mitral valve, especially, for example, for the barbell disease, it's a real useful tool. And in these two images from the left ventricle uh, perspective of the mitral valve opening, we could see how the mitral valve apparatus could be studied with these two renders and speci specialized with the glass view that enhance the borders of the image. That's a pretty clear, and this is mm, how it's delined of the mitral valve area that for, for example, for a study of the uh, mitral valve stenosis. According with the left atrial appendage, we could um, uh, study the, um, the inner uh, uh, volume of the left atrial appendage to exclude, for example, any clot or any thrombus with the light uh, moving to the different positions. But if we are going to use to the glass view, we have an external point of view, I said before, and it's a more uh, likely vision like we are when we are using a CT for a study and assessment of the left atrial appendix. And it's uh, really useful for a study the real anatomy for exclude any low for any division that is really important for the planning and the device selection in this procedure. We are going to cover with this, uh, talking about these new renders, these uh, different uh, steps and procedures. And one of the, on the steps that uh, that are included in many procedures is the interatrial septal puncture. We need to puncture inside of the fossa ovalis, and the fossa ovalis could be located uh, in a really easy way with the uh, transillumination, placing the light uh, in the other side of the of the interatrial septum, and you could note how the needle is just in the middle and is making a clear tenting before to cross the the septum. And at the end of the procedures, many times we uh, de could detect a residual atrial septa defect that could be studied with the glass view that enhance the borders for a clearer assessment uh, of the shape of the defect. And if we add color to study the residual sand, for example, in that case, from left to right. In the left atrial appendage closure procedure, moving the light, we could uh, study uh, with the creation of some shadows for example, if the device is completely 
uh, in contact with the left atrial tissue if there is any area of leakage of tension that is not completely in contact with the with the with the tissue. And for example, here in this image, according with the pulmonary rate, moving the light from a from this position to an upper position, we could see there is a shadow here that is revealing an area in cover of the in the upper uh, aspect of this uh, left atrial appendix that should be surveillance during the follow-up to exclude any clot or thrombus formation. In the mitral trans uh, uh, catheter edge to edge repair, this new tool uh, has many capabilities, as for example, to study the quality of the leaflets and the quantity of the leaflets that are included in the grasping and how is the tension and the anatomy of the new orifice areas. For example, for the quality and the grasping properties, it's more uh, useful the uh, transillumination with a true view and for studying the anatomy of the new orifice, for example, the glass view. And the glass view erasing the artifact of the clip is really useful as well for locating the residual jets, as could, you could see here, that is, for example, in that case, is immediately lateral to the to the clip. For the mitral par paravalvular uh, leak closer, we could study and perform these procedures uh, with the classical renders, as you know, especially if we employ a uh, 3D color. But if we employ uh, the true view with the, the uh, transillumination, uh, um, placing the light behind the prosthesis, the light cross through the defect and is really clear where the defect is, which is the shape, and which are the measures for select the device to close this, uh, this defect. This is another example, and um, here, there is an other detail, how is the added value of these new renders employing, for example, with the glass view, with the transparency, we could see the wall path and the channel of the re residual regurgitant um, yet inside, inside of the paravalvular leak. And we could select a, a better strategy and the device and we, which are going to be we, we, uh, our best approach to to close, for example, this defect, because we could uh, make a distinction between uh, linear tunnels and really tortuous tunnel. And according with the aortic valve replacement, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, you know, in many centers, the, this procedure has performed without the support of the echocardiography, but these renders have uh, some uh, added value and and some details in, in, in concrete aspects. For example, for the study of the membranous interventricular septum placing the light in the right ventricle, we could study in a pretty clear way which is the uh, which is the membranous septum, which is the length, and which is the relationship according with the aortic valve, and as you know, is related with the depth of the implantation and the needs of permanent pacemaker imp uh, implantation after the procedure. And for example, this is the last slide on the 3D renders. Uh, it's a, a, a really interesting slide because you are seeing here an aortic valve uh, replacement. It's a core valve. And here there is a jet, but it's not absolutely clear if it's inside or outside the, the, the strut of the, of the aortic valve. And employing this glass view and the color, we are seeing the whole path of the, of the regurgitation. And with what, just one click, with the multi-view tool, the multiplanar reconstruction uh, are completely aligned with this uh, regurgitant jet, and we are seeing here the struts of the aortic valve, and the jet is outside of the uh, outside of the valve, so it's a paravalvular leak, and we could locate and quantify this residual regurgitation in a real, clear, and simple way. According with the fusion imaging, the message is uh, really brief and really short. And uh, as you know, we have uh, some tools before to uh, overlay the 2D and the 3D echocardiography over the fluoroscopy. But we have a limited field of view and a limited understanding of the complete heart anatomy over the fluoroscopy. This point has been um, resolved, for example, with the CT fusion imaging that has a larger field of view and we could segment any uh, chamber separately and we have the complete anatomy over the fluoroscopy, but, but without a cardiac gating and without breath gating. So we uh, we have resolved these limitations now with the echocardiography and uh, the employ of artificial intelligence. So employing uh, com a full volume 3D image and uh, complete segmentation 
uh, of the, uh, any of the chambers of the heart with the artificial intelligence algorithm and uh, the fluoroscopy in two different projections, we could overlay a gated model fusion with separated uh, segmentation of any of the chambers and with uh, specific landmarks in different positions over the fluoroscopy during the wall procedure. And for example, uh, and for example in the microclip, if you have the wall segmentation of the left atrium, you have the lateral wall and all the reference, for example, here is the pulmonary ridge during the bending down of the microclip catheter. So it's absolutely clear that it's safer than the previous one uh, fusion anatomy. Or for example, in the TAVR procedures, we could have the complete anatomy and the references for perform a zero contrast procedure. Or even with the landmarks and the, gate, uh, and the cardiac gating, or all the time, we could select the fluoroscopy uh, projection without any uh, milliliter of contrast employed. So the take home messages is absolutely uh, um, one message that the cardiology future goes uh, with the, by the hand of the transcatheter procedure. So the future of the cardiac imaging is related with that. So we need to improve our uh, monitoring uh, capabilities during the procedures, and we are going to employ for that high definition 3D, realistic renderings, artificial intelligent algorithms, and multimodality and fusion imaging to improve our visualization, our understanding, and as well, the result of the procedures that we are involved uh, in. So uh, thanks for your attention, and I hope that you feel really interesting this, this lecture of 3D.